in the previous video we have seen the basic theory of forward uh, directional coupler and we said that in uh, the case of uh, matched uh, reciprocal and uh, symmetric uh, directional coupler S11, S22, S33, S44 are zero and uh, we obtain that S14 equals zero, S23 equals zero and also we obtain that S13 has a magnitude equal to S24 so in the general S13, S24 has a magnitude beta uh, S13 is assumed to be uh, an angle theta and S24 uh, has an angle phi so S13 is beta multiplied by e to the power j theta and S24 is beta multiplied by e to the power j phi on the other hand S12 equals S34 equals alpha and we have shown that uh, the relation between alpha and beta is that alpha squared plus beta squared equal unity and the relation between theta and phi is that theta plus phi equals by plus or minus multiple of 2 pi this was the general case for a forward direction coupler now a special case for a direction coupler is when theta plus phi equals y where theta equals y over 2 and phi equals y over 2 in this case both S13 and S24 has the same magnitude and the same phase so this special case is known as symmetric coupler so in the case of the symmetric coupler S13 equals S24 equals beta multiplied by e to the power j by over 2 e to the power j by over 2 is actually j so in this case the scattering matrix for the symmetric coupler could be 0 which is S11 alpha which is S12 S13 would be j beta beta multiplied by e to the power j by over 2 and S14 is 0 S12 equals S21 alpha because it is a reciprocal S22 is 0 S23 is 0 and S24 equals S24 equals J beta 2 and finally S13 equals S32 S24 equals S42 and S34 is alpha equals S43 so this is a scattering matrix for a symmetric couple so for the symmetric coupler, the value of theta equals the value of y equals y over 2. Another special case is anti-symmetric coupler. In anti-symmetric coupler, uh, the condition theta plus y equals y is satisfied such that theta equals 0 and phi equals y. So, in this case, S13 equals beta with an angle 0, so it is beta and S24 equals beta with an angle by so beta e to the power j by or in other words minus beta so in this case S13 equals minus S24 that's why this coupler is anti-symmetric because the coupling from 1 to 3 is uh, negative the coupling from 2 to 4 uh, in this case, the scattering parameters, it would be S12 is alpha, S13 is beta, uh, S24 would be minus beta. So, in this case, if you are looking on the tail diagonal, it is anti-symmetric. Alright? It is symmetric along uh, the original diagonal but is anti-symmetric along the off curve all right so is this anti-symmetric because s13 equals 
minus SO4. Actually, the symmetric coupler and anti-symmetric coupler are two special conditions for the general coupler. For the general coupler, theta plus y equals y. So we have any option for theta and any option for y. But as special cases are the symmetric and unsymmetric couplers. For these two special cases, we have uh, another special case of this special case. The another special case of this special case when alpha equals beta equals 1 over square root 2. Because actually we have the condition that alpha squared plus beta squared should equal unity. So another special condition when alpha equals beta equals 1 over square root 2. So in this case, uh, if the, we are talking about the symmetric coupler, uh, the symmetric coupler with alpha equals beta is called quadrature hybrid coupler. The symmetric coupler with alpha equals beta is called quadrature hybrid coupler. And in this case, the S parameters, all of the S parameters has a magnitude 1 over square root 2. And here, S12 uh, is unity. Uh, S13 is G because this was e to the power G by over 2 and S14 is 0 uh, S12 equal S21 and S24 uh, is G because S24 here is beta to the power G5 and 5 is by over 2 so it would be G and in a similar way, S31 uh, is J, S32 is 0, S33 is 0, S34 is unity, which was actually alpha. All of them are multiplied by 1 over square root 2. And in a similar way, S410, S42 uh, is J, S43 uh, is unity, S44 is zero. This actually is a scattering matrix of uh, the quadrature hybrid coupler with a phase shift 90 degrees. In this case, uh, if the input power is going from board 1, so it is divided between board 2 and board 3 with equal magnitude but with phase shift 90 degrees. So the phase at board 2 should be zero the phase at board 3 would be 90 degrees. If the bar is going from board 2, it would be divided between board 1 and board 4, such that board 1 will be at phase 0 and board 4 would be at phase 90 degrees. If the bar is going from board 3, it would be divided between board uh, 1 and board 4. Such is that at board 1, the phase would be 90 degrees and at board 4, the board, the bar or the phase would be uh, 0. If the bar is incident from board 4, it would be divided between board 2 and board 3. Board 2 will be at a phase 90 degrees and board 3 will be at a phase 0. Uh, the other special condition is uh, the magic T or hybrid T or uh, magic uh, hybrid T or retrace hybrid. Uh, in this case, the magnitude of alpha equals the magnitude of beta equals 1 over square root 2. And uh, the phase shift between uh, the two boards, theta and phi, is theta equals 0 and phi equals uh, pi. So in this case, uh, there is a phase shift uh, 180 degrees between uh, the boards. Uh, the scattering matrix in this case so would be S11 is 0, S21 is 1, S2, S31 is unity, S3, S14 is, uh, oh, sorry, S41 is 0, and S uh, 2 1 is unity, S2 3 is 0, S, uh, S2 2 is 0, S2 3 is 0, 
S24 is minus 1 and so on. In this case, if uh, the incident power is going from port 1, it would be divided between port 2 and port 3 with equal magnitude and it would be in phase. However, if the input port is going from port 2, it would be divided between port 1 and port 4 with equal magnitude but out of phase such that the phase of board 1 would be 0 and the phase of board 4 would be 180 degrees if the bar is going from or from board 3 it would be divided between uh, board 1 and board 4 in equal magnitude and in phase finally if uh, the input board or the power is going from board 4 to be divided in equal amplitude but out of phase between board 2 and board 3 such that board 2 should be has a phase 180 degrees and board 3 could have phase 0. Actually this configuration is very important in uh, mixers in microwave mixers uh, where we add uh, the local oscillator from one board and uh, the RF from another board such that uh, the local oscillator and RF add in output board and subtract in another board so we have the addition and subtraction from the RF and the output from this we can extract uh, the IF actually uh, this discussion about using uh, magic T or retrace uh, will be discussed in detail in microwave uh, mixers but till now let us say that we have a hybrid or we have a direction coupler with out of phase or in phase or phase quadrature uh, conditions. So we have quadrature hybrid phase, we have uh, magic T or retrace hybrid at 180 degrees phase uh, difference. Alright. Uh, to specify uh, a direction coupler, the quantities which are required to specify a direction coupler, assuming that the input is at power or at board 1. So we have uh, the input, we have the through, we have the coupled port, and we have the isolated port. Uh, the ratio of uh, the power at the through to the input is known as uh, the insertion loss. So the insertion loss, L, is 10 log the power at port 1 to the power at port 2. And is briefly minus 20 log the magnitude of S12. Uh, the coupling coefficient is the ratio of the power at port 3 to the power at port 1. So the coupling C is 10 log power 1 over power 3 or in other words minus 20 uh, log S31 uh, or because the magnitude of S31 is beta, so can be minus 20 log beta in dB. This is known as the coupling coefficient. So, actually, when I'm using uh, a direction coupler, I'm interested in the insertion loss from the input to through and the coupling coefficient from 1 to 3. What I'm not interested in is the power at board 4. Because actually the power at both port should be isolated. So we have uh, a definition of the isolation. The isolation is the ratio of the power at board 4 to board 1. And ideally it should be uh, uh, the power at board 4 is 0. So if I'm talking isolation is 10 log power 1 to power 4. This should be in the ideal case infinity. But actually, we don't reach to the effect. 
and this is uh, minus 20 log the magnitude of S14 and in the ideal case S14 is 0 so log 0 is infinity or minus infinity so this would be infinity in the ideal case uh, another uh, parameter or another quantity for defining uh, the direction coupler is the directivity the directivity T is the ratio of the power at board 4 with respect to the power 3 when the input bar is going from board 1 so effectively it is S31 over S41 or in other words we can say that is 10 log bar 3 over bar 4 when the input is going from bar 1. Bar 3 is proportional to S31 as I said is beta and bar 4 is related to the magnitude S14 so we can say it is 20 log beta over S14 and once again if S14 in ideal case is 0 so this would be infinity and the, direct, the directivity in this case would be infinity. Practically, uh, the isolation and the directivity are not infinity, but they should be very large values such that uh, this direction coupler would be useful. This means that uh, it is required that uh, almost all the power going from board 1 go to the board 2 and small fraction is going to board 3. Or some is going to board three, and if something is going to board four, it should be very very small compared to the power at board three and board two. That's what we are seeing. The quantities of the directional coupler, the coupling factor, indicates the fraction of the input power that is coupled to the output power. Uh, the directivity is a measure of the coupler's ability to isolate forward and backward waves or the coupled from and coupled ports. Uh, the isolation is a measure of the power delivered to the uncoupled port. And the insertion loss accounts for the input power delivered to the through port dimension by the power delivered to the coupled and isolated ports. As I said, the ideal coupler should have infinite directivity and isolation. This means that the value of S14 should equal zero, assuming that the input port is from port one. Okay. All right. So till now we have studied the basic characteristics of uh, the power divider and the direction coupler. The question now is how to implement such power divider and direction couplers by using conventional uh, transmission lines like microstrip lines, waveguides, and uh, similar microwave transmission lines. That's what we are going to study in the following videos. See you in the following videos.